coming out of the Goldway. Thank you so much. So, uh, first off, uh, this is based on a popular manga, and I wanted to know which is more violent, the comic or your movie? Yeah, there's a lot of violence in the film. <laughs> yeah, it's so simple in uh, manga. It's more in, in the film. Was there anything in uh, the comic that you weren't able to put into the movie? Uh, I don't think so. It's a short uh, story. Uh, if you read it, then probably within 30 minutes you can finish reading it. So I don't think I missed anything. <laughs> and I'd like to point out the actor Endo who plays Vertebrae. Uh, he is actually, this is his third film in Midnight Madness uh, because he was in uh, Legend of the Kitchen Knife from last year um, and he was also previously in uh, Sukiyaki Suki Western Django so uh, hopefully we'll be able to get him here one day. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes. Japan is somewhat notorious as a, as a very male dominated society. Uh, yet, uh, this story you must find uh, actresses who can uh, literally take control of the destiny of the other characters. How difficult was that? Well, uh, it looks like a um, male dominant um, in Japan, but the uh, reality is no. <laughs> yeah, at home, the women are much stronger than men. <laughs> yeah, I just explained that uh, very easily. <laughs> Who else do we have here? Yes, the side. Actually, there's that much torture in the comics, so it's being faithful to the source material. So, if you only had, say, one pin instead of 20 pins, you're not exactly getting the idea. <laughs> but why did you did you decide to? I mean, that that is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I, I originally wanted to make that torture scene longer. <laughs> but the sponsor of the TV station, so we kind of debated the short and long, short and long, and then ended up uh, uh, became a little bit longer than a TV station wanted. Yes. What was the significance of the uh, the song, you uh, know, the torture scene from Bridge on the River Kwai? <laughs> Uh, that torture scene is impossible. Uh, can't really happen. So that the music helped uh, people to enjoy. Like a, like a, it's like a joke, right? It's not the real. So the combination uh, is good. 
And then he also has the light jazz as he's pointing, putting out all the needles and everything. Um, I really enjoyed the um, blood spatter and spit effects. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the slow motion that went into that, and it got into almost a crystalline um, artistry. Was that to make it more like the manga, or um, what was your thinking behind it? Yeah, there's no no effect in manga. I, I just think uh, you know the the cartoonist might be better if he show a little bit more. You're on the side. Yes. Why was it a period piece? Why was it set in 1999? <laughs> Okay, that actually um, the original story was released, manga was released in 1999. And uh, these days, uh, you know, cell phone uh, tech, um, technology is way beyond. So cannot express that high tech uh, if we talk about uh, 2011. So uh, we set the time, 1999. Time for one last question. Yes. You. <laughs> uh, the question is, uh, the, the last scene, Akinita uh, started walking sort of like naturally, normally. So why is that? Well, that's a movie, this guy. I agree with you, yeah. At the, from the beginning, I thought so. But that's the movie. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much for your patience. And the very incredible cameraman from Japan uh, is outside. He wants to uh, ask you what you thought of the movie. So talk to Japan. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you tomorrow night for the last night for Kill List, which you almost